Hello everyone on YouTube, Spark here and in this video we're gonna be making an interface to display emotes as you might have seen in the strongest battlegrounds it's gonna be very similar to that one we're also gonna be using the top bar plus module but it will play a minimal role in this but even before doing that there's a tiny bit of setup which we're first gonna need to do so let's get right into it so the first thing you're gonna need to do is download an image that I uploaded on Google Drive it's the first link in the description so first you're gonna need to download an image which I have uploaded on Google Drive it's the first link in the description so once you download that you're gonna need to upload that onto Roblox Studio so you go to the view tab asset manager images bulk import and then go to wherever you've stored it um, I stored it in pictures so just double click that yes okay it, it's uploaded now we'll set up this circle and the rest of the interface so in starter GUI we're gonna add a screen GUI name it anything you want Then we add a frame. We're gonna want to turn background transparency to one. Now if you go into size then you'll see scale and offset in both the X and Y. So we don't want to use offset. We want it to scale so that even if you go on a mobile or on any other device uh, the, the interface will adjust itself accordingly. Type 0 0.1 for now, then size it as you want. Okay, so that's done. Now we're gonna add an image label. We're gonna name it circle. Again, we're gonna turn off offset. Here we will set scale to 1, index to 2. So now we turn background transparency to 1. Now we will set the image. Here it is, circle. Okay, so here we have the holder. Just turn it down a bit. Okay, so that's our holder set up. We will set like four emotes here. We'll add another frame. Just follow what I'm doing here. We 
again you never want to use offset or at least you don't want to use offset most of the time position it as you want now we're gonna add some text to it we could add like a, a 3d render of a dummy doing the animation here like you see in the strongest battlegrounds but again it's a bit difficult to understand I'm gonna keep it as basic as I can so maybe I'll do that in a separate video but for now we're just gonna use text so we'll add a text button scale to 1 Set the text to text font to anything you want, of course. I'll set it to Microma. Old Italian. You can really customize text here. For example, I'll change the color to white and add a stroke. Okay, so for now, um, okay, so for now, as you can see, I did not change the text. It's button, and I'll explain that later. We can, we will change the text name in in the script itself. So now we're gonna change the actual text. So I'm gonna name it emote one here. So now what I want you to do is select the emote frame one, press Ctrl D to copy it, then change the name as well as the text. The reason I turn the background transparency down for a bit is so that I can actually grab it and move it, you know. Press that control, hold control and then drag it. And copy it again. Maybe. Hold control and press left click to select all of them. Just the background transparency and there we have it. So, okay, so you just want to disable this. 
for now and that's the whole interface setup done now we're gonna move on to, to the next phase which is gonna be setting up the animations so here I have a dummy which contains the an animations which I'm gonna need I didn't make separate emote anims because that will take too much time so I'm just gonna use these animations so you wanna go to where these keyframe sequences are I'm gonna right click them save them to roblox and then copy the animation id we're gonna need that later so you wanna go to replicated storage create a folder for your animations go in that folder and add an animation so I'm gonna name this emote one and now you wanna select this animation go in animation ID and paste the ID that we copied earlier okay so that's that and do the same with the other three animations so here are my four animations inside the anims folder in replicated storage and that's everything you need to do to set up the animations now we can get to the scripting part so now you wanna create a new local script put it in starter player scripts then name it whatever you want I've named it GUI um, so these four variables you're gonna need them so this variable requires the top bar plus module okay, so anything you put in starter GUI goes in players and goes to your local player GUI um, I'm gonna show you how that works as you can see it went into player GUI you need to understand this uh, you're gonna need uh, this to define variables so now we're gonna create a new top bar plus button So here I've copied the image ID for this emotes image. I'm gonna paste that in here. Okay, so what I've done here is that I've created a new button for the interface uh, called emotes I've set an image to it and I've binded two functions to it so whenever I click so when I click on the button once for the first time this will run and it will show us uh, the e emotes available and when we click it again this will run so it will deselect and the emotes interface will close so I'm just gonna show you how that looks like as you can see the button is there when I click it the emote interface appears click it again and it disappears okay great so so far it works so now we're gonna preload the emote animations so for that we're gonna need a table So here I'm gonna put the directory for the emote. Okay, so whenever so for when the character spawns in, it's gonna load all the animations at once. So now what we're gonna do is bind functions to each of these text buttons. So whenever we click the buttons, the the respective animations should play. So first we're going to define them.
So what I've done here is put the name of the first button and then I added an event called mouse button one up. This is a built in event. So whenever I left click the emote one, all of this code runs. And here you can see I've added some if and else if statements. What's happening here is that it's gonna check if any of the emotes is already playing. So for example, let's say emote 3 is already playing and I pressed emote 1. It will check if emote 3 is playing and if it's playing, it will stop playing that animation and play the animation for emote 1. So we're gonna do the same thing with the rest of the buttons. Okay, so that's done. Done. Now we're gonna test it. So as you can see, all of them play their respective animations. So I pressed emote 2 and it's playing that animation. Now if I press emote 1, it cancels the previous animation and plays the new one. So great, it all works. Now of course there are much better ways of doing this, like I could have put all of this in a function. Um, we could have used for loops and stuff for coding, decoding. Basically we could have optimized this a lot more, but I did all of this so that it's easier to understand, kept it as simple as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you guys learned something. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave your ideas in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.